All right, guys, welcome back to Growth Minds. Today we have Justine, also known as I Justine online. Thank you so much for making time for this amongst all this crazy stuff that's happening around the world. Thanks for having me. And the good news is I've definitely got some extra time. So this has been so fun, like actually getting to, I guess, sort of, I mean, it's not technically relax, but I guess not have to just rush to meetings. So you can really mm. just kind of sit and focus on things and have time for doing podcasts and stuff like this. Yeah, there's a part of me that's like, man, why did I drive all that way for meetings in the first place? You know, last year or a couple months ago, I feel like more people are just going to use Zoom more and just be able to stay at home. And it's just so much more convenient. You get the same amount of work done as well, you know? Yeah, I, th I think this is going to change everything. I mean, everyone's talking about like the new normal. So it's going to be interesting to see how companies adjust. Because for me, like this has been my whole life doing stuff online, having this oh, type of setup. So seeing like companies sort of struggle and scramble to kind of figure things out has been just crazy. Even like celebrities now are trying to figure out how to make videos and they're starting YouTube channels. And I don't know, it's kind of fascinating just to kind of watch it all unfold. For you, this is like a norm. So you're just like, Psh, like, wash me guys. <laughs> this is, this I mean, is it is, but it's like, we would still like all of the events that we had this year. Like I just started getting more into events, like actual live events. Cause I'm like, I've done so much online. So it's really just a different thing to be able to actually meet people and see people in person. And then mm -hmm. this all happened. So we are one of our events we did in January, it was called vlog university. So it was like a two day crash course. People come learn everything there is to learn about doing video production, marketing, everything. And then shortly after, like this all happened. So it's like every event that we had planned to go to, it's just, it's not a thing anymore. Like E3 for video games, right. NAB for all the video production. It's just on hold. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, have people been reaching out to you just to figure out how to survive all of this stuff that's happening and how to, uh, I guess, how to set up a home studio? I'm sure people, a lot of people go to you for this kind of stuff. Yeah, I've even been offering advice like on Instagram. If I see people kind of struggling, I'm like, mm, their lighting could be so much better. Like, I don't want to be the one to tell them. But also if nobody else does, like, you don't know. Like, it, it just okay. it's something that you learn over just doing it. Um, Please tell me, I've by seen... the way, if you have any things that I should remove in the background. This is a pretty no, raw format. Good. So no, <laughs> you know, get rid of that piano bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the piano needs to go. But no, I mean, <laughs> just the sense of like even webcams. You can't buy a webcam. I ordered one maybe like 20 days ago and it still hasn't arrived yet. Like Logitech is so backed up. So it's oh the weird God. things. It's like the supply and demand of items that people never really needed that much is, is the, is the hard part. So yeah. I had a couple old webcams that I was able to send out to some companies and friends that needed them. So yeah, it's just a weird, weird time. Well, what are you using right now? I think I'm using a Logitech. I forgot what version this is. Yeah, I do. I have uh, one of the okay. newer Logitech ones. So this one does shoot 4k which is great. It's like the Logitech Bureau, I think it is. Yeah. As we're like looking. <laughs> there was one other one. It's like a magnetic one that I ordered that works with the, the Mac Pro. So it's it's kind of made to, to stick onto the, the Pro display. There so that go. one I'm still waiting on. But this is kind of like my gaming setup here. Nice, so I've got the nice. gaming setup and then the editing setup. Very cool. So is this like your studio in in the house then where you, that you do for everything? Yeah, it's in the Pretty house. Much. So it's it's like I wake up and I look at all the work and then I go downstairs and look at all the work and it just doesn't really go away. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, I, I'm really excited to have you on. I, uh, I discovered you, I think three, three to four years ago, I was getting a upgraded phone and I was, uh, <laughs> and I was just looking for all these different devices. And, uh, one of them that I clicked was yours it was in incredibly useful and uh very relatable in, in many ways so i ended up i forgot what phone it was actually um but uh what happened in the end i think like last last year or two years ago because i as we're talking off air i was, I was yeah. living in mexico city it got stolen oh, and no. uh yeah 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 unfortunately um so this is kind of like full circle i need a new phone now and here we are with uh one of the top technology reviewers in the game <laughs> so uh um, yeah that's so funny though but it's really fun doing the phone reviews because i mean i'll give you kind of like the brief specs but a lot of times you know there's channels that will give you all of the deep dive and the specs and the speed and all of you know the really in-depth stuff but it's like if i'm looking for a review i just want to know like show me what the video looks like so i'm basically doing a review for myself 
mm. and then sharing it. So it's kind of like all of the questions that I would have about something, like I answer them in the video. And then it's fun too, because after I post the video, I can look in the comments and if people have other follow-up questions, I can then make a follow-up video to that, or I can just answer them in the comments if it's easier. That's awesome. And how did you get into it? Because obviously you can just tell even through the camera that you're so passionate about talking about all these different intricacies and details. Uh, where did this passion kind of start for you? Probably when I was little. I mean, I think in sixth grade is when we finally got the internet. And that was a lot longer than people will probably think. Like now sixth grade yeah. kids, they have the internet. There was nothing like back then. This is like right. AOL. We're talking like ICQ days. Oh, man. So it's very, very, very early. We used MSN just, in Canada. Oh, yeah. I guess I did use that a little bit. But mostly you, ICQ. Okay. Yeah, it was our that an AOL. But yeah, I just was always fascinated by technology. I was always taking stuff apart at, like my parents would have to put back together like the VCR or something like that. But we I've just even a very, very early age, like I was always filming stuff on like their huge, massive camcorder with the massive VHS tapes. And I would even take two VHS players next to each other and do editing back and forth on two VHS tapes. And so what that's was the kind editor of like that you used back then. It wasn't anything. So I would play it on one VHS. I would hit record on the other one because the two uh, VHS players were connected. So I was basically playing a piece and recording it to the VHS tape and no then way. fast forwarding on one and then hitting record on the other to record. So there was it was basically just like linear editing. So if I messed up, I had to rewind on the other one. Wow, it was a very, cool. very simple setup. So it's like we're talking like the 90s. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, those were the good days. Um, oh, I remember I when I used that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like an older person talking to a kid. Like these are the good old days. But yeah, um, yeah I remember all of these social networks that are around. So we use I used a little bit of ICQ, uh, but MSN was like a big thing in Canada at least, which is where I grew up. I know AOL. It's like the AOL for Canada. Um, yeah. Google was just forget about it. I was using Ask Jarvis back in the day. Uh Oh, you know, oh, ask the, Jeeves too. Uh, like, ask Lisa. Jeeves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jarvis, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, I didn't know. Maybe there was like a Canadian, like Jarvis was Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. We, had, we had Jeeves over here. <laughs> yeah, Jeeves. Okay, I like Jeeves better. Actually, damn it. Why do we get Jarvis? <laughs> Did you really have Jarvis? Was that what it was? Or I don't that know. Like... It was so okay. it was so long ago. You know what? It, you know what? It could have been. Um, no, I don't think, I think it was, it might have been cheese. It probably was cheese. How funny would that be if there was a Canadian Jarvis stuff? <laughs> I know, it would be amazing. I, I mean, there might be, we, who knows? <laughs> yeah, so there was Jarvis. Um, and then we used, uh, I know you guys had my, it's so funny how like different countries have different social norms. So whenever I talk about friends of mine that are in LA, none of them really recognize it, but we had Nexopia. That was like a big thing in Canada. It was like the MySpace of you, uh, of Canada, that. yeah, it wasn't wow. as so big guys, for sure. But you guys didn't use MySpace, or you did? I used it a little bit. I, you know, you know, MySpace has like the they used to have like the top eight friends. Oh yes, that, I'm very familiar. You have some stories, <laughs> oh, yeah. don't you? <laughs> oh, I was a MySpace for sure. I'm oh like, yeah, mm, put my favorite bands in my top eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Mean, I love the feature, but whose idea was it? Because it's ruined so many best friend relationships, I'm sure, to have a top eight and just the, to be that ninth person that got cut out. Just I imagine. I know they updated it, I think, to like a top 12 at some point. And then I think there was like HTML hacks that you could also add in to make like kind of a subset of it. Oh, my gosh. They, I remember oh, those days. Wow. I was such a MySpace person i was gonna say something else but that wasn't the case i was so i used myspace because there was this website that you could get free ipods from and i mean growing up like you know i mean my parents were not going to buy me an ipod they're like you don't need that so there was a website that you could get people to sign up under yours basically like a pyramid scheme so you'd get people to sign up underneath of you so if you got like 10 or 15 people to enter their credit card on this website <laughs> this company would send you an ipod so i had like four or five ipods and i got like a mac little mac mini like one of the first ones by oh. doing that and it was all legit though i mean people were actually getting things so huh. i mean i can't knock the scam but because the scam actually worked so that's where i got a lot of my first like apple things from 
It's insane. So you had to get four to five friends or people that you knew to enter their credit card. By the way, this is yeah. like late. No, this is early. 2000s? Whenever MySpace was out. So this was probably actually like 2000. Yeah. Wow. So entering a credit card yeah. back there was not a was not a small thing. Right. That's like like scam central. This is like people were so sketched out entering anything I online. Even- like think I had a credit card. Like I'm not sure. Maybe I might have actually signed up to get a credit card just so I could do this, this <laughs> scheme. But the fact that I was getting stuff was how I was able to like prove like, hey, this is actually legit. And I mean, mm. I think a lot of people and a lot of my friends were able to because we kind of had this whole just circle of people that were re-signing up to get their credit cards. I don't know. It's weird. Either way, Damn. those were my MySpace days. <laughs> wow. Wow. And yeah, I'm trying to think when people got off of it, but um, yeah, these all these social networks were, there were so many. There was another one called, um, I don't know if you guys use GeoCities. It was like yes, a website builder. Really you used good. it? Yep, I used that because I used to develop websites. So that's what we would use. Yes. Like I would use GeoCities. There was also another one. It was like Tripod and Tripod, it was Angel okay. Fire was another one. And man, cool. once I got into, I think, so my computer at my parents' house, I would reset it every 30 days because I wouldn't be able to use like Photoshop or a Fireworks or Dreamweaver or any of those types of apps because I didn't know how to like hack them. And so every 30 days, I would have to back up the computer and reset it so that I could use all of that software again. <laughs> but I just no remember because once I figured out Dreamweaver, you could basically design the websites without having to really go in and code all of the HTML or any of the CSS or anything like that. So... I remember copying and pasting that code into like Angel Fire or GeoCities, but it's just insane how quickly I feel like everything has just shifted and changed to where we are today. It's it is insane. Yeah, I I, I stopped using it. Uh, so the last time I used it, GeoCities, I thought I was like the coolest person. I tried to woo a girl when I was like when I was <laughs> younger into th- into like trying to get her to get me to like build her website or something because she was a photographer. Yeah. And I thought that was like the coolest thing. And then I was like, she said no, basically. And I was like, all right, well, (laughs) yeah, Uh, she's married. It's okay. It's all good. It it worked out for her. (laughs) It it worked out for her. Yeah. She's still a photographer, uh, but probably on Squarespace or something like that. Much better website. And um, yeah, I stopped, I stopped using it for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden, like you have like all these websites like Squarespace and Wix and all these things where it's just like 10 times more advanced. So it's uh, just grown exponentially. Who knew we'd be yeah, here today? It's crazy. Even, I think like WordPress, because that's what I used to use for my blog for mm. the longest time. And that was yeah. still something that you could customize, but you still had to have like the templates and be able to be somewhat knowledgeable how to like import all of your old things. So yeah, because yeah. I started blogging before I started doing the, the video stuff. So mm. it's just, it's interesting to see how that text to photos to then video sort of translated as like the tech got easier, the internet got faster. Do you remember mm. E-Bombs World? Yes. <laughs> it Wait, still exists though. No? At 27. Okay. So I'm a, a little bit older, but still like that was, oh man, E-Bombs World was so great. Like that's where oh they used to God. post like all those like flash, like uh, cartoons and stuff. Oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. So good. Rest in peace, Flash. <laughs> um, there was another one called, well, again, I always, I always like, it's always hard for me to make these references because Canada always has a different one, but Addicting Games was like another one, addictinggames.com. Yes. You knew that I one? I that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. It was like those was, little easy Flash games and stuff. Yeah, it was oh, so good. So, it was so addicting. Oh my God. It's probably the reason why I failed out of elementary. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we're digressing here. So you, so you started out, uh, obviously you, you got into, uh, you, you, I guess you got into MySpace and you got all, you got kind of addicted to all these different Apple products. And is that the first thing you started blogging about using WordPress and all these other tools? Yeah, I started, it was probably before even college, actually all through high school, I had a daily random photo website. So I would update a photo every single day, just something that I either found online or something that I took because I also love photography. So I would do, I would, I coded the entire website just by hand, HTML, the forward, the back, the archives. So every day I would have to update the main daily photo, the forward, the back pages, and then like the archive of the month. So, I mean, it definitely took a while, but once I had that system down, I mean, I probably ran that website for like five, six years, maybe just updating daily random photos. 
Um, but I was real into like forums because I loved video games and Apple and coding and like these kinds of things that I didn't have any friends that liked that stuff. So once I realized the internet had all these people that liked stuff that I liked, I was like, this is incredible. So I huh. swear I sort of found my home like in high school, wow. actually maybe so- even in middle school too, but that was pretty early. Cause my first website I ever went to was nintendo.com and they used to have like this fake little house. <laughs> on there that you could like click which room you want to go to and it'd be like a different chat room it was like just it's like one of my favorite memories of the internet ever oh my god that's insane and you say in high school or middle school you were i guess were you kind of like the odd one out there wasn't anyone that was into that world was it not like a cool thing back then i guess it was definitely not cool. But in high school, I did find a group of friends. We called ourselves the Leak Crew. <laughs> so <laughs> we would we would go to like cyber cafes, which was a thing because oh yeah, people didn't really have the internet as mm-hmm. as fast as they did. So we would go there and we play video games. Like we'd like buy like an hour or two hours. We'd all sit around in a circle playing like Unreal Tournament or something. And then finally, towards the end of high school, the internet got a little bit better. So we would take our computer to like one person's house and then have LAN parties. And just play video games all weekend. And and now, I guess we're kind of all doing the same thing, but just in different locations. A little bit more advanced, so, too. Yeah. A little bit more advanced. Were you playing console games? I, I played, I was like more old school, like PC games like StarCraft, Diablo, uh, Counter-Strike a little bit when I was a bit older. But I never yeah. really got into like the console games. Um, what Were you doing like PC games back in the day as well? Yeah, we were doing PC. I was definitely more console because I came from like playing a lot of Nintendo growing up. And then I know we had, I think like our first other, we had a PlayStation. And then I don't think I had an Xbox until later, but we did mostly play PC all through high school. I know a lot of my friends played Counter-Strike. I didn't quite get into mm-hmm. Counter-Strike because I was more into sort of the, the Unreal Tournament where it was, and Doom where it was just a little more like futuristic. I didn't really like the real life. And now Call of Duty is like my favorite game. So it's a little more realistic, but yeah, it's just yeah. crazy how like that kind of all shifted. It's insane. Yeah. Um, and then so you started blogging and then how did you start introducing yourself into more video? Were you, were you comfortable with video like when you first started as well? Yeah, I mean, I went to college. So I did two years. It was like a two year school uh, and you we, I went for video production and editing and 3D and Uh, website design, graphic design. So it was kind of like two years all crammed into just like learning as much as possible. So I started just really getting into video. I really started actually YouTube because I was teaching myself to learn uh, to edit in Final Cut because I had graduated. I got a job and they wanted me to edit in Avid and I'd (laughs) I'd never edited Avid. But the guy was like, hey, it's like a, it's a massive system. So that's what they edit a lot of like TV shows and like movies and stuff on now. But I didn't know how to edit Avid. So I had to basically teach myself that. And I thought it would be a lot easier than it was. Not easy if anybody edits Avid. Yeah, I don't even know what it was. So (laughs) different role for sure. It's like a massive system. But for the stuff that we were doing at this job, I was like, I don't, there's got to be an easier way. And it was on a Mm. PC. So I had a Mac and I was like, let's just learn Final Cut. And I needed some footage to learn to edit on. So I just filmed myself doing dumb stuff around the office with one of my best friends. And <laughs> that's how I taught myself to edit. I started posting that stuff just online. And then I was getting comments. Hmm. And of course, I was still on MySpace at the time. So I kind of already had cultivated like this little audience there. So I started posting it there, posting it on Yahoo. They had like a video sharing service. Rever, which is no longer around, was one of the first websites so to actually pay creators. If you remember that, it was a while ago. But they... Um, yeah, they were like one of the first ones that you could actually make money on. I think they still owe me twenty dollars. Pretty <laughs> sure <laughs> they closed down. And it's FYI, too bad. <laughs> okay, we'll find who the founder is. We'll tag him. Yes. <laughs> um, so you said you had a following already on MySpace before you did all the video stuff. So how how did you how did you already cultivate some sort of a an audience? Or what you're saying is it just your friends mostly? No, I definitely had a, a pretty big MySpace audience for like what oh, it was at the time. So I did have a bunch of followers there, which is also how I was able to get a bunch of the free iPods and, and stuff like uh, that. Right, right. So I think I was just, I'm not really sure how it happened. I just, I, I don't really know actually how I had people following me on MySpace, <laughs> but I did. So they were there. So that was kind of where I sort of got that start of that initial, I guess, community of people. I mean, even some of my 
real life friends now I've met on MySpace, which is kind of weird to think Whoa. about. Yeah. And I mean, I moved out to California only having people that I met on MySpace. That's so insane. It, it is kind of weird to think about now. I kind of actually forgot about that. But yeah, some of my friends now, I it's from MySpace. It really was a place for friends. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so Holy nuts. crap. Before it, before it went a different path, I guess. Yeah. For sure. But just to think that, I mean, I moved to, to LA and knew no one. It's honestly, it just for people that I had met on MySpace that I knew lived out here. And, you know, it's definitely, it was a very weird time to be meeting people on the internet because that wasn't common at all no. back then. Yeah. My mom's very upset about it, which she didn't really know at the time until she read my book later. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you did what? Why yeah. didn't you tell me any of this stuff? Yeah, like I'm still alive, aren't I? I yeah, survived. I don't know how, honestly. What was that like? So you met, uh, you met the. I guess what was the first experience like from meeting someone from MySpace and meeting them in person? It's it kind of like fine. a blind date, I guess. It was fine. I mean, it was, yeah, I was just like, oh, cool. Hey, what's up? Like we already talked all the time on MySpace, so here we are. So yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know. I don't really remember. It's, it just felt yeah, like yeah. normal, I guess, even though it definitely wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it's so normal now though, right? Like with, with all these dating apps that are out there and just people, there, there's so many ways to connect that online to in-person experience that people hearing this are like, probably like, yeah, of course that's okay. Like that's, but it wasn't yeah. before, you know, it's, it wasn't a thing. Yeah. I mean, it's also different now to just having now like a larger audience like I, I can't mm. do that yeah. as easily as before so it's kind of like you kind of meet people by proxy where it's like okay is this person safe cool we can meet them so it's I don't know or you meet people at events but yeah. it's just you I feel like you do kind of I don't know it's it's a very normal thing now though yeah yeah is that I'm assuming that's changed quite a lot since you've just you reached so many people now um, have you, cause I, I think we, so we had Anna Akana on, are, are you familiar with her at all? Yes. I love her. She's great. She's amazing. Uh, yeah, and she's she incredible. is, she's, she's so funny. Uh, so witty as well. And she did stand up comedy back in the day. And I think she said something around like someone was a stalker and brought a gun, was like threatening to bring a gun to one of her shows because oh she gosh. was like deeply in love with her or something like that just like the creepiest thing ever basically and um she ended up quitting stand-up comedy to wow. pursue i don't know if it was that specific reason but i'm sure there was yeah. a lot of things that went with it but it was it was certainly a big factor like she was she just realized like she went from not being able to reach anyone to reaching so many people that all these things that she never would have expected started to happen in her life mm -hmm. um I don't know if you have a similar story that went that far, yeah. but I'm sure it's pretty. Unfortunately, I have a lot of stories. And, but the, the weird thing is like, we don't usually ever talk about it publicly. It's kind of like that thing where like, I mean, at least for me and a lot of my friends, like we don't ever talk about the stalkers because little yeah. do they know we're probably stalking them back because we need to know where they are at all times. But the hard part is, you know, the authorities, it's like, I have, I mean, I, I have tons of things printed out. So if there's ever like oh, wow. a problem or something, I'm like, all right. Let's go through this list. Who could it be? So Man, it's, I can't imagine I'm, what it's like. It's weird and it's scary. And I think it's just one of those things that kind of comes with the territory. And it's, it's unfair, really. But it's also just the mental health of these people. Like, they're not well. And it's me being, you know, a, a fairly sane person watching. This is a very recent development because I've been doing Peloton classes, like, every day <laughs> since there's nothing else to do. And you start, like really connecting with these people that you're watching. Like they're telling you stories, they're telling you your, their daily lives. So it's like you kind of start connecting with these people that you don't know at all. Whereas when I'm mm. watching YouTube videos of most of my friends, it's like I'm connecting with them because I've already met them or know them. But I was like, this is the first time that I kind of had that experience where I'm like, okay, let's let's see what Jess is doing today. I wonder what Bex is up to. I'm like, these are Peloton instructors. <laughs> it's like, so someone who is unstable and watching these people over and over again, like you do feel like you have this sense of connection with them because it is such an intimate thing. You are most of the time you're in your house and you're talking to a phone or a camera or whatever, and you're connecting with people on a real level. 
unlike, you know, the Peloton instructors, but it's, it's, you are connecting with people. And I think it's just something that, I don't know, it does come with the territory, but it's not, it's not fun and it's scary for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And even, even with Peloton, I feel like Robin and I have a pretty good connection. Oh my Peloton. gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's okay. She's in New York. <laughs> I know. And then even that has been interesting just to watch that because they just went and switched over to a new studio and to mm. not see people in the studios in some of their live shows is crazy. It's but scary. I guess they're lucky too, because they are set up to be able to do those types of live streams and you can still have the social distancing with the, the camera ops, you know, off somewhere else. True. True. But it's yeah. really weird now. Like it's, Watching shows and TVs and seeing people like hugging or in a crowded bar. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You got to get out of there. Like, this <laughs> yeah, is not yeah. safe. <laughs> you can't be doing that. Even content that was filmed like like six or 12 months ago. I'm like, what? I get like a jerk yeah. new reaction, you know? It's like you're thinking yeah. about going to like a group yoga class again. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. And then yeah. I started training jujitsu two years ago. So it's like that is the most close contact sport that you ever could be in so mm. now we're doing like live zoom jujitsu training classes solo i'm like this is not <laughs> does that work i'm not, in, I'm you not like enjoying a dummy this. doll or something like that i actually did buy a dummy yes like a full size <laughs> six foot person and it's so heavy my sister and i were carrying it up the steps she's like i can't believe what i'm doing right now <laughs> like we're carrying a body upstairs but it's just, it just doesn't have the same effect so no, it's yeah. Hard. It's probably the thing that I miss the most is just training and and just that community aspect and the the mental and physical, I guess, training aspect that goes into it as well. Sure, it's just sure. Uh, yeah. Are you big into and UFC? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Is, no, I I don't know why. Like this was something that I just sort of. I think I felt like at some point I was so weak that if something ever happened, like I wouldn't be able to at all defend myself. So mm. I don't know. I just started training and I just, I love it. But, uh, yeah. 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 Keep the stalkers at bay. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, do you want, you want a rear naked choke here? Go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was listening to just, just while we're in stalker mode, uh, I was listening to a episode with, Whitney Cummings, she's like the stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. and she had a, she had a very similar problem, and she was talking about a story about like one stalker that was on her tail for like a couple of years, basically. And the ironic thing is that when she alerted the authorities, she ended up uh, like they tapped her lines and everything, so they were ready for this guy to call her at a specific time. I guess he called. I guess he called her like every day or like at a specific time. But this time oh they gosh. were ready and she never picked up before. And this day, because everyone was on at her house or, or had a truck or wow. something outside, they picked up at the same time, just like in the movies, like Pell picked up at the same time and she started talking to him and the police were trying to trace his location and where, yeah. where he was calling from. So like she was trying to signal to them like, okay, like how long should I keep talking to him? And I think it ended up being like a five or 10 minute conversation where she was trying to be nice. She's trying to do everything she can to keep him on and was trying to like get to know more about his life. And apparently what happened was that um, he just stopped calling her after that. They never actually ended up finding him, finding him, but he just ended up not even talking to her at all. And what the investigator said was that oftentimes what happens is a lot of these stalkers, they, they, what they're fantasizing about is the fantasy itself is like the mystery of the person and the yeah. fact that this person is like on a pedestal or someone that is like glorious than, than the, they have, than, than it is in real life. So when she started talking to him and getting to like be interested in him and, and he just realized that she was just like a regular person, like a, just like a oh regular girl. He just lost all interest in her <laughs> and he never called her again. And she was like, what the fuck? Like she started being self-conscious. It was a joke, I'm sure. But she was like, yeah. was it me? Like, should I be self-conscious about this? That's so incredible funny. though. I mean, it's, it is crazy because it is something where you think that these people are whatever. I'm like, I'm sitting in my house. Like I am a person. Like it's yeah. not that interesting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, people definitely the, put people on a pedestal up crazy. 
like, yeah, but the magic of editing, I'm like, yeah, everything looks so interesting, but it's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, just a green screen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is crazy. And I mean, it's, certainly it's because of things like MySpace, YouTube, gaming and all that stuff. Um, do you ever wonder what you would be doing if you weren't vlogging or if you weren't uh, like streaming games and making all this content yeah. online? If you just had like a regular nine to five job, or what, what do you I think mean, that would have been? I don't know. I mean, because I, I was just doing production, so video editing and that kind of stuff. And then um, I guess I just started doing the Internet thing. And then my first trip out to L.A., I was like, oh okay, this weather's great. I hate mm. snow anyway. And then I just kind of picked up and moved. So I, I mean, I probably would be doing something in production. I don't know if it'd be editing or I don't know. It's hard to say. Cause like, I feel like I'm the kind of person that I never really have a plan. I kind of just go with it and see what's mm. going to happen. I feel like a lot of times people are like, well, what are your goals? I'm like, I don't know if, if I would have had a goal, I probably would be back home in Pennsylvania still editing or doing something. Cause it's like, you kind of have these goals, but as things happen, it's like your whole perspective on everything changes. So right, it's like, right. I kind of have some goals, but I'm okay if I stray from them. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Who knew you would be, uh, where you are today? What, what was the decision for you to make a uh, move to LA? Cause that's a big, pretty big decision for yourself. Oh, I mean, I moved here with like nothing. Like I, I basically was homeless and I actually moved to San Francisco first because I really love tech. So I thought mm. that's where I need to be. I need to be in San Francisco. And that's even more difficult because I mean, San Francisco is more expensive than LA. Trying to find a place yeah. to live was just impossible. So I was there for a while and then I kind of found a place in LA. So I just did sort of San Francisco back and forth uh, and did a bunch of tech stuff. So I don't know. I just was like, I'm out. Like, this is cool. There's something here. And I was a lot younger mm. then, too. I don't know if I would have done the same thing now, but I still I, I still did it, which was good enough because it got me out here. Yeah. I think I had a, a bed in my apartment for, like, maybe a year. Where did you sleep? Just on the floor? On the floor. What? <laughs> I mean, I had, like, I guess I, well, I think I finally did get a mattress, which was good. But for the longest time, like I just slept on the floor. I had my computer camera. I was like, that's it. Making YouTube videos. Let's go. Oh. It's super glamorous. Although I've heard that's like good for your back. If you're, did you have like a pillow at least? Or did you have like, did you do the roll up towels situation? I mean, I had, I did have a pillow and like a blanket. And then I think I did get a mattress, but then that was also on the floor for like the longest time. <laughs> just like one upgrade at a time. <laughs> slowly slowly very slow <laughs> oh my god well i saw the um i saw the, some of the original content i don't know if it was original it was definitely not original but i think one of the things that you start doing was you started interviewing a lot of these uh like business people and entrepreneurs and in mm -hmm. these different influencers um how did you get into that and w was there someone that you found to be some of the most interesting there when you were doing this um I feel like because it was so early that, you know, every time I would see somebody else doing something really cool, I'm like, oh, my gosh, come be on my podcast or let's do this. Because I mean, I had a podcast in like 2006, which is was terrible. But I mean, it was still so early that <laughs> yeah. there was this thing. I think it was called Talk Shoe that it made it so easy to like record podcasts. Mm -hmm. It had a phone number so you could do like dial ins. And so I would just do that like every weekend. But I remember when I got like my first collab video with Rhett and Link. And I mean, they're by far, I just thought these guys are so funny. And I started making videos with one of my friends. So I was like, this was exactly what I wanted to do. This is, they're making funny videos. They're just like having a good time. So I remember the first time I reached out to them to like be on my podcast, I was like, this is so cool. So it was just kind of like basically just having fun. And I think a few years ago when I felt like I really hit the wall with burnout, I was like, why, why did I start making YouTube videos in the first place? Like, what is it? that I'm missing. Like, why am I not having that fun anymore? So I kind of just went back and thought of like, what are my top three favorite things? I love tech. I love travel. I love video games. I also love food and my dog. So I just kind of started making videos about those things. And it just really <laughs> revived not only myself, but also my YouTube channel. So it was definitely very super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it sounds like tech gaming and food are, is just like every guy's fantasy for, for, uh, for a girlfriend. Every guy, uh, I think a guy, a friend of mine made this joke about something like this. And my initial thought was like, it sounds like you want a boyfriend, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you know, they always think it's that great until like all your girlfriend wants to do is play video games and eat. It's not actually that great. You're like, but what about me over here? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's funny though. Um, and how, so, how do you... How do you balance that with uh, with everything that's happening in terms of the at least like the relationships that you built? I know when you first came to LA, this is you, you didn't you didn't know anyone apart from some of the MySpace friends that you had. Were you, are most of your uh, people that you're surrounding yourself with are they generally in the industry, or do you like to have like a separate group of uh, people in your life that are kind of isolated from that, so that you can kind of separate business and or at least work and, and life yeah I mean it's it's a little of everything because I feel like everybody in LA is somehow in the industry so like one of my really good friends like she's a makeup artist so we work together a lot and then my mm. sister she also does YouTube videos but we work a lot together I mean she I feel like I mean she's not I, I keep trying to make her an employee because I'm like you do so much stuff for me like let me just make sure it's worth your while she's like no it's it's good but she does so much just as far as like helping out with shoots and helping me shoot and then I also help her shoot a lot of her videos so we kind of just like tag team you know doing productions and stuff like that but I mean a lot of my friends just do kind of the same thing so mm -hmm. it's kind of all over the place but for the most part I basically just hang out with my sister a lot oh nice and she's also uh, a, a vlogger or she, she also has a YouTube mm -hmm. channel yeah she does a lot of travel content which is something she can't do right now yeah so she's just been kind of like filming and like just making like silly videos of hey this is what my quarantine is going cool. and she does a lot of video game stuff too so we've been mm -hmm. playing a lot of Call of Duty and, and I've been playing so much Animal Crossing that I, I'm just glad that no one else is doing anything else in the rest of the world, so I don't feel as bad. <laughs> What's Animal Crossing? Let me look that oh up. Oh my goodness. It's <laughs> it's basically just like this little gate. Well, it's been around Animal for a while, Crossing. but it did just come out recently. So you kind of have like this island and you build the island up, but you have to do like repetitive tasks like harvesting fruit to make Ooh. money and Oh, it's so addicting. It's like the top game right now. And you can get eight people together on your island. So I've had some of my actual friends, we all come hang out on one person's island. <laughs> it's really silly. Yeah, you guys make sure you're social distancing in the game as well, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I think Animal the crossing. trend was everybody had doctor's masks on for a while. <laughs> so that was like one of the things in the shops that you could buy. <laughs> well, I might even check out this game. A few of my best friends and I were playing Catan, Catan Universe, which is like mm -hmm. super old school. But this seems like this is like a more advanced Catan where you can play with multiple people. Yeah, I've never played that, so I'm not sure. But it's, I mean, this is pretty much what everybody's playing right now. And do you stream it live then on Twitch? My sister was streaming on YouTube. I was just shooting like kind of little bits and pieces of it. And then I edit it and then I post it later. So I feel like That's I did insane, so though. much. Yeah, it is. I just don't, if, it's so boring if I'm sitting there live because, I mean, for hours I'll just be going through and like trying to pick out like an outfit or like <laughs> what I'm going to put in my house. That is not very interesting content. <laughs> <laughs> the behind the scenes, me, right? Yeah. yeah, like watch me decorate my house for hours. Although people have been streaming it and I feel like people enjoy watching other people play. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do a live stream, invite what? some of the viewers over. Yeah, I mean, you, you've really built your entire life around just doing your favorite things that you already love to do. And it just so happens that you're reaching a ton of people and obviously making a great living out of it. I've, I've always been so fascinated about this idea, just coming from someone that loves to game, but not as an observer. It's kind of like you love to play baseball, but let's be honest, baseball is not the greatest sport to watch, you know? Yeah. At least that's what I thought about video games. And then I see this world of Twitch and YouTube gaming and all these new sites that are coming out. What do you think is the like the psychology of just wanting to watch someone game in their in their studio? Well, I think it comes down to like the person too. Like you have to be somewhat entertaining. So it does yeah. it's just the same thing. Like why would I want to watch somebody go on a vacation? Like it's you connect with the person doing the content. So I think a lot of it is that. So it's like funny or entertaining or they're relating on some sort of a level of this person is cool and they're really good at the game. So I think there's a lot of different things. And a lot of it too is some of these kids, like they don't have the game or their parents won't buy them the game. So they're just going to watch people 
play the game as well. Oh, and is then, that what it is? Okay. Yeah, and then I've been watching a lot of Animal Crossing just because I want to see, like, you know, other people's islands. How are they building? So getting design inspiration. A lot of times, I know, oh gosh, I remember whenever I was playing Zelda, like, I would get stuck in a part of the game. I'm like, okay, well, I, don't, I have to go watch a walkthrough because I can't figure out this stupid puzzle. So I think there's so many different ways that, that people mm. watch it. But when people say, oh, you're just streaming video games. I'm like, these people are streaming for hours and hours on end. And it is a grind. Like you, after a live stream, I mean, just even doing an hour, I'm like exhausted. These people are doing like 10 hour streams. You have to be on 24 seven. You have to be constantly thinking, not only gaming, but also entertaining. So anytime anybody says that 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 streaming is easy, I'm like, it's really not. It's really not easy. (laughs) So I give them a lot of props. No, for sure. Even, uh, I mean, Podcasting, I feel, is relatively a lot easier compared to what a lot of these gaming streamers do because you're right, they have to focus on the game, but also be entertaining, uh, figure out what outfit they're going to choose and everything. It's just like, it's a whole <laughs> whirlwind, you know? Um, so yeah, a lot of yeah. credits. I mean, if you're doing like a live stream podcast, that's also, I'm sure, pretty stressful too. Yeah. Because you would have to make sure, I mean, even like Joe Rogan, I mean, I don't, he does such a great job like of consistently getting great guests doing a super long podcast because that's also yeah. exhausting like just trying to be on interviewing people so it's everyone always just observes all of the things that the people would do like that's so easy i could do that no no yeah no it's, way. it's all a struggle <laughs> crazy yeah um and there's new ways of expressing yourself new ways of creating content new ways to consume content there's just so many of these new platforms that are coming out You've kind of been through, you're like an OG, you really came through seeing all the different patterns that, yeah. uh, that have come through. Are, do you have any hunches of kind of what are the next trends you see in terms of these new content platforms or social networks that may potentially yeah. come out in the next three to five years? Um, I mean, I definitely hopped on TikTok a little late and I wish that I would have been using it sooner, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's been so much fun because it's just kind of reminding me of like what like YouTube was at the beginning. I feel it like that's just, your dog in the background, isn't it? Yes. Hi, Maddie. <laughs> you can, be, you can bring My dog is also up. a DJ. Well, he's, come here, bud. It's a boy. He's a DJ. I, uh, I named him DJ Mini Matt when we first got him because I had big plans of turning him into a, a musical wonder. <laughs> And then I was going to go on tour. I like bought like this whole crazy DJ setup because I wanted to teach myself to DJ so that the dog could DJ. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Just a little thing that I'm like, oh, this is like one of my interests. I like electronic music. Maybe I can turn my dog into a DJ. But he doesn't like people very much. (laughs) Well, Uh, mostly children. And I was worried. I was like, if I take him on tour and yeah, it's not going to work out. So he's going to have to be a solo social distancing artist if he ever wants to make it. (laughs) <laughs> well, is he there? We'd love to see him. He uh, or not? He ran yeah. away. He'll yeah. probably be back. Okay. He heard but, my voice. <laughs> yeah, I heard, yeah, I forgot. What were we talking about? I don't remember. Something about future of uh, oh, future oh, social yeah. networks. Given that yeah, you're an OG, I mean, I think, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think there's so much stuff that just kind of pops up, and like I've been very early on, like Instagram. I think I was the 103rd person Whoa. to join Instagram, which is crazy to even think about. Like Twitter, very very early. I was on that like since maybe 2006. I think I was probably a couple thousand people to to join Twitter at first. And I think like being an early adopter was great, but I also have spent a lot of time and energy making content for websites that just have disappeared. So I think Mm -hmm. the future of it, I mean, I think live streaming is obviously huge, but just the short, fun, silly content of TikTok, it's just, it's really fun. Like it's just kind of brought back that love of creating and being silly and so I've been posting some of the TikToks that I made like on Instagram. And I guess my newer audience is a little confused because they don't know that Justine. Whereas uh, all of the people that have been following me for years, they're like, oh my gosh, this is great. Like we missed you. Where where have you been? So I'm just <laughs> focusing doing like serious content or posting, you know, like the staged Instagram photo shoot photos. Mm. And I was like, ah. So the quarantine, they're like, it's really getting to you. I'm like, no, this is actually just me. This is why <laughs> you never knew who I was. What did you? <laughs> didn't even know. So yeah, I'm not really sure what's going to be next. Because I think a lot of these apps are trying to figure that out. And a lot of them don't survive. So I know there was mm. like Byte, which was like the old 
kind of vine creators kind of trying to recreate vine. So I'm not sure really. I wish I had an answer Yeah. But for now. I'm just gonna, I'm putting a lot of effort into TikTok. For sure. For sure. What kind of content is it on TikTok that Oh, it's, I mean, it's terrible. It's not good at all. But it's <laughs> who you are, you're all. saying, right? It's who you it's really true. are, you're it's saying. Just, well, the, but the fun part about TikTok is you can just kind of go and find like a trending video and then you kind of remake it. And it's, there's a lot of like voiceover type stuff, like mimicking other things. But I'm kind of taking top trends and turning them into like tech or something that relates to like playing video games. Mm. So it's it's it still is me for sure. But yeah. it's just it's just fun. And it's like very low content quality, so you don't have to try too hard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think podcast is definitely going to be, at least hopefully, sticking around just given that people can do stuff on the go. I think like with automated driving cars, people are going to want something to listen to. Maybe videos are not should be a pretty big thing, but uh, with like smart home devices like Alexa, yeah, there's a lot of trends that are going towards podcasting i think mm-hmm. um but yeah all the other bite-sized content stuff i'm not i'm not quite sure on that so wanted to pick your yeah. brain on that a little bit but TikTok's definitely blowing up yeah i think ar is also going to be interesting so i know apple is yeah. putting so much effort into you know trying to with the new ipad they have like a lidar sensor so that's supposed to help kind of scan your room so that you're able to get better ar experiences so i'm sure the new iphone will probably have that as well so I think AR is going to be interesting. I don't know what kind of social network you can do with that, but I'm sure if if someone's going to do it, it's they're probably going to try it. Nice. Are you bullish on VR as well? I get a little motion sickness, or I probably would like it, but I do yeah. like the uh, like the the Oculus Quest because it's kind of a standalone thing, and mm. it is just so fun because you can kind of still be in your space when you flip like the switch to be able to see everything around you and like set your markers. But yeah, I love, I really like Oculus. I just have to limit my time because I'm like, okay, I need to sit down <laughs> feeling a little, a little dizzy. Yeah, so I think yeah. that's a personal problem, unfortunately. <laughs> like you wanted to be stuck in that world. You're like, damn it, I'm back in real life. <laughs> I know. As soon as I start feeling a little nauseous, I'm like, okay, I got to take a break. And then I put it back on. So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I really, I do like VR. But the hard part about VR is like creating content for VR. Mm, so it's been, yeah. I did a couple of 180 videos, which was interesting because a lot of the, the stats that some of these VR companies were noticing is a lot of people were just watching content, like watching YouTube videos. So with and sitting on their couch. So with 180, you can kind of just have that 180 view and not have to worry about turning around. So that's a lot easier to create for. And we did a couple that looks so cool in VR because it's like 3D. So I was like unboxing a PC in 3D, but I was using my flamethrower and a chainsaw. And like I did simple things like making pancakes in 3D. So it was just kind of like seeing what we could do, but it was just really fun to kind of test that out but it's going to get easier to produce because right now it's still a little bit difficult. Yeah, it's still, it seems like it's still in its infancy. I, I, uh, I, I went to University of Montreal and one of the guys that I knew is starting like a VR company. So he's kind of in the ins and outs of what's happening there. Montreal is also like huge for, for gaming, like Ubisoft, mm-hmm. I think is based out of there. And he was telling me some crazy things. I don't know if this is on trend, but what he was saying is eventually with biometrics, uh, that they can gather within VR or AR and all these things that are doing that companies, um, well, the, these technologies will eventually be able to track the different sensations that you, you're feeling and that you're mm-hmm. having within your body as you're watching content or as you're playing video game. And what will happen is advertisers or brands can start to target consumers based on uh, how they're feeling not just what oh, they're gosh. watching, which means like, like if you're that's watching, just what we need. <laughs> I know, right? It's crazy. Oh my God. So it's like, if you're watching something scary and your heart starts beating faster and you start to get the sensations as if you were in fear mode or if you were excited, uh, if you were happy, there'd be ads that are targeted based on that. I mean, how crazy is that? It's insane. I mean, that already happens every time you open up Instagram, like you could be talking about something. You're like, oh, great. Now I have an Instagram ad for like dish towels or something. So oh, yeah. It's, man, it's so crazy. And they say that they're not listening, but I don't believe it at all. Well, you have some insider information. Do you, do you, have you, 
yeah, what are your skeptics about it? Do you feel like these companies are generally gathering more data than we think they are? I mean, I would imagine. I, I mean, I don't really have any insider info, but just, I mean, I think they always say they're not listening. But when I get those ads, I mean, I can be talking about something so obscure. Yeah. I'm like, I did not search for this. I did not type it. How are you, How did you just show up on my phone? So yeah, it's just yeah. really crazy how that happens. Yeah, even when, I mean, like, I... Unless, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, unless the algorithm really is that smart. Right, yeah. The the, the scary thing um, was, like, I understand, like, if you're on Facebook Messenger, I get that Instagram mm -hmm. will have the information because of the same company. But I've gotten ads from, like, YouTube when I've had conversations with friends of mine on Facebook Messenger about, yeah. uh, like, this thing that I wanted to buy. And I got, like, an ad for it on YouTube and never searched for it on YouTube. Never searched for it on Google. It was just like next level, like third party sh information sharing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's, it's scary, but it's also, I've definitely bought some stuff from Instagram ads. So it's very effective. <laughs> I was like, oh, this backpack, that is super cute. Oh, how did you yeah. know I needed some new socks? All right. <laughs> so it's definitely effective. That's for sure. No kidding. Yeah. Basically everything on this table is bought through Instagram <laughs> ads. So uh, I hear you. <laughs> Um, well, Justine, thanks. Thank you so much for, for making the time to, to come. Um, we generally like to leave the, the audience with a small but actionable advice uh, around, I guess, how they can start their project that they have. A lot of these listeners are freelancers, entrepreneurs, people that want to uh, you know, carve their own path or start their business or just stay sane almost all these things that are happening right now. Uh, do you have any tips or, or, uh, or anything that you'd like to share? It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, just to leave the audience with one piece advice. Yeah, I think just embracing the highs and the lows because, I mean, if, I mean, maybe it looks like all of what I've done has been very easy, but it definitely has not. And, you know, I think a lot of the stuff that I show is all the happy, go lucky, yay, everything's great. But it's been a long road. I mean, I've been doing this since forever, it seems like. Like, I basically have started, like we were talking about, like in sixth grade, I made my first website. So it's like every little piece and experience of your life goes into to the now. And it's I think now more than ever, like I've had a lot of time to reflect on that and just think about all of the things that have happened to get us to where we are. So it's like this time in quarantine, like I've been spending a lot more time like focusing on my setups, like trying to perfect the lighting. And I will say this is the first podcast where everything has went perfectly well. I pushed perfectly. the button, turned it on. I was like, yes, it worked. So it's like now I have, you know, a bunch of these setups that I can kind of carry on when things kind of get back to normal. But I think there isn't going to be the normal that we know as it was like there is going to be a new normal. So I think kind of working around what that is and making it work to our advantage, but also not forgetting that there's people out there who don't have the knowledge or the tech or the money to be able to do what we're doing right now. So, you know, reach out to your friends, to your family, ask if they know anybody that might need a piece of tech or even just the the simple knowledge of how to set up or how to do a Skype call or how to do a FaceTime. So I think it's just reaching out and connecting with people and seeing if anybody needs anything, I think is really important because a lot of us do have either extra gear or just even just the knowledge of how to, to, to do a better live stream or something can be very, very helpful. But again, there's ups and downs. I think consistency is key and when people say, Justine, how have you been doing this for so long? I'm like, well, I just didn't quit. So mm. I'm still here. <laughs> so I think just keeping consistent and persistent is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. And don't just reach out to your top eight friends, guys, on MySpace. Reach out no, to no. at least 20, <laughs> at least 20 people. Yeah, extend that a list a little bit through these <laughs> special times. <you> know? <laughs> All right, Justine, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, I have stopped recording and I'm going to save this and I will...